What's up, YouTube? My name is Bob Morrison. Welcome back to another review. Today, I'm really, I'm reviewing a very special thing that I've wanted to do for a while. This is the Marvel 80th Anniversary Advent Calendar. Now, um, if you've watched my radio show, which I talked about a few videos ago, um, I mentioned this on one of my episodes. Now, what I did not know is that there are two versions of this one. Now, I already opened it. I didn't open the bags, though. I want to say that for you guys, but there are two versions of this box. So I wanted to do some research on it because I found it weird that I only saw it at EV Games and there's an only GameStop sticker on this. So I found out that there is a regular version of this box that you can buy, but I guess it was only in the States. That's why I never saw it. So I wrote down all the different versions. So I'll talk about that after I open the box. Well, first, I just want to show off this cover. Sorry, a few of the tabs fell off when I was opening it, and I also noticed that a lot of the ones that I put back into the box were in the wrong category. So I had to just quickly fix it. So this is the slip that it comes with. It's a nice slip. Nice and laminated, but this part's nice and like smooth, like you know those dairy milk packages. That's the only way you can like describe that smoothness uh, feeling. So this is actually cool. It doesn't actually give away what's in this box. Because one of these figures is not like the other. But I won't give that away too soon. Well, Venom's on there. That's cool. But yeah, so that's what it looks like. You can keep this flap. I will. Because I'll just have it this way and just show this stuff. So that's the flap. Now, this is the box that comes with it. And it's got these nice Marvel um, comic panels on them. It was painful to watch other videos on this. Some were very good, and the person knew exactly who they were talking about, and others were not. Sadly, though, I don't know who this is. I feel bad about that. But I can lift, list off anyone else. So that's Rocket, before he joined the Guardians. Thor, with a beard. Awesome. Uh, classic Iron Man. The Hulk, Doctor Strange, Captain America, Hawkeye, Vision, and Black Widow. So there you go. Got a nice Marvel logo on here. Now, um, we're going to open this up, and we'll give away, of course... What I didn't want to, but on the insides, they have basically the same from the panels, but they have Ant-Man on this one. They have Black Panther on this one, so that's a little different. And these are the guys. So now, I'm going to open them one by one. So this will be a longer video. And show you which one. So for day one, so yeah, I cut up, open this thing. Because what I want to do is I'm going to remove the plastic after I'm done and put something cool in here. So, yeah. So, day one is, um, I got this a week ago, so I'm just excited. So, this is Golden Iron Man Classic. Very nice. Very cool. I like it because it's a chrome and, um, so I have a lot of the Pine Size Heroes and I put them where the Riot Radio Headquarters are, so I'll be happy to have these in my room just for myself. So, yeah, that guy's really cool. Let's put him over there. Day two is I think you already know who he is because you saw a flash of him. I got classic Captain America who's got the fins on the side of his hat. Uh, his mask, um, he's got a little white mark here, so that's fine. No, not all of them can be perfect. There's a little shield, and that's what he looks like, and their heads. Don't turn, um, but believe it or not, my first ever things pop figure were two pen toppers that were classic Iron Man and classic Captain America, and that was my first ever pop figure thing, and then, no, oh, that was for Civil War, yeah, I got those. Next up, I have Red Hulk, now if you don't know, it's weird though, I'll be honest, um, these packages are weird because... Halfway through, they go from something like this to this weird film. So, yeah. But here's Red Hulk. Now, if you don't know who he is, in the comics and some of the uh, uh, cartoons that I've watched, Red Hulk is General Ross. And you're like, General Ross hates the Hulk. Yes, he does. But he realized that he couldn't beat the Hulk. So he decided to try and make himself into the monster. So the people would get confused and hate the Hulk altogether. So it wouldn't make him an Avenger anymore. It would make him a bad guy. And he won, honestly. He was able to keep him under wraps until in one 
uh, cartoon that I watched, Captain America and the Wasp figured out what he was doing, and they made and they pressed a button on a device which triggered his alteration, and he turned to this monstrous Red Hulk, and um, the Avengers were all defeated, and then Hulk beat the crap out of him, ruined him, and then he left because no one believed him, no one believed Hulk, no one believed Bruce when he said, "This isn't me doing these things. This is a bad person." So he left because he decided that the Avengers were fool were fools for not believing him, and he would be on his own. He was on his own for a little bit until Captain America convinced him to come back. But yeah, so that's where that happened, and also Hawkeye convinced him too. Next up for day four, I have classic comic Thor. Awesome, he's got the wings on his helmet, which are super nice, and he's got a tiny Milner right there. Yeah, classic stuff. Sweet. Next up. I got, for day five, Black Suit Spider-Man. So, this is from the Secret Wars comic, believe it or not. Uh, it's when uh, Venom is introduced, but it's just a black symbiote. And, um, Peter is advised to take it off because it could raise his aggression. And, of course, he doesn't listen because he wants to beat the bad guys and win. So, he keeps it until they go back to Earth. And then Peter realizes what a mistake he has made and tries to remove it. And it becomes Venom. So, that's awesome. Next up, I have a, f a character who has become very cool. One sec. Sorry, just had the exacto knife for that. This is comic accurate. Loki. Loki is always cool. He's become very popular recently, and honestly, I love it. I love Loki. He's um a funny character, and apparently, in um Avengers Endgame, this is a spoiler, by the way. Uh, there's a one point they go back in time uh to Captain America's original like base where he was in World War II, but it's the 70s, and before Iron Man and Captain America leave, there's a guy sitting in the background with long black hair, holding what looks to be the Tesseract, and kind of just waves, so people think that's Loki, um, messing with, uh, the, uh, the time stream and everything, because that's apparently what he'll be doing in his Disney Plus series Loki. And also, I never noticed this, in uh, the, when they first go back in time to 2012 for New York, when all the Avengers are on the elevator, Loki waves at Hulk before they go down the elevator. And Hulk hated it so much that he punched the elevator and ruined it. And then he said, um, which confirmed that he could talk all along, which was awesome, he said, my favorite thing, take the stairs, hate the stairs, <clears throat> And then it cut to him going down all the stairs. And he goes, so many stairs! So, um, yeah, I, that was always really funny to me. Next up, I got... One sec. Here we go, people. I got Venom. He looks very awesome. He looks like he's very ready to mess up some fools. And I'm going to say that this is the anti-Venom. Venom. Anti-hero Venom. Anti Venom. Not the anti-Venom Venom. Because I like that character better than the villain. So yeah, there's Venom. Next up. I have the lawyer. Known as Matt Murdock. And if you don't know who that is. His name is Daredevil. And Daredevil was my first favorite Marvel character. I actually enjoyed the film Daredevil when I was younger. And I found it really cool. And I, I just liked the way Daredevil was. And the way he beat up bad guys and stuff. I wasn't really a fan of the Netflix series because Daredevil was the type of character who would honor those that he fought. And in the Netflix series, he kind of kicks people all the down and just doesn't really wait for, like, the honor of anything. So, I was like, eh. Next up, I got the only Marvel movie I might not be going to. Black Widow. So this is the uh, comic version of Black Widow. <clears throat> she looks very cool. I always liked her con her costume for the comics because it was very spyish, which was interesting. And the only reason I said that I'm not going to her movie is because it looks good. Like that's my only nitpick with it. Not not that David Harbour was in it. And 
I'm not a big fan of him, but it's just because it just looks and it feels wrong because she's dead, and it's just, uh, it, like, if she, if she came out before Endgame and everything, then I would like it, because I'm like, Black Widow, and then she dies, I'm like, oh, no, not Black Widow, but now I'm just like, oh, great, here we go, oh, another movie, her, Ray, like, and Hawkeye doesn't even have a movie yet, so what the fuck, and he's not even set to be in this film, and this isn't set before anything, it's set after she's joined the Avengers, and it's just tying up old loose ends and this shit, I'm like, I'm like, can we get, like, an original story that's before Avengers where you're an evil mother and, like, you're murdering people? Like, can we get that story? Can we not get this, oh, I'm an anti-hero story? Like, no, come on, man. Now, on a happier note, I have my favorite Spider-Man ever, which is Miles Morales. I love Miles Morales so much. Um, I've always loved his story and his arcs and just the character all to gen all in general, and I love his comic books so much, I've read the graphic novel so many times, and my only nitpick with it is that if you take out Tom Holland's Spider-Man, and you put in Miles Morales' Spider-Man, it makes more sense, because in his original comic, uh, when Miles Morales is first bitten by the spider, and he changes, he, crawl he opens the window to his dorm, he crawls across the ceiling, jumps down, Takes off his Spider-Man costume, turns around, Ned is there, and he drops his leg with this star, and he explodes all over the ground. He goes, you're the Spider-Man from YouTube. Yeah, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Because it's from the movie. That's why I didn't like Homecoming, because it's just a rip of the fucking comic. But it replaced Miles Morales with Peter Parker. It's like, Ugh. Because the comics that that movie is based on is set in the Ultimate Universe, where Peter Parker is already an adult, and Ned is a child, so they shouldn't fucking know each other. So, so yeah, and they also had to change the origin in the freaking Into the Spider-Verse movie, which just pissed off fans like me even more. So I'm like, good job, Marvel. You did it, once again. So next up, I have another X-Acto Knife victim. Like, oh. The bags go from the easy to open film from freaking tough plastic, like they messed up halfway through. But anyways, I got comic accurate Doctor Strange. I love comic accurate Doctor Strange so much, and the Doctor Strange pop figure I have from his movie is my favorite pop figure of all time. Just the way it looks and everything. Oh, I love Doctor Strange so much. He's such a good character. So awesome. Hell yes. Next up, I got my second favorite character. I have Black Widow. No, no, sorry, Black Panther. Now you might be saying Black Panther doesn't have a cape. Well, he did in the comics, and he was actually invented for the 1960s civil rights movement in the states, which is awesome. We got an awesome character from that time, which was also awesome. So yeah, there's Black Panther. I love Black Panther. I have a lot of Black Panther pop figures, as you all know. Next up is my favorite villain ever, ever, Thanos. This is comic accurate Thanos, which is awesome, and he has the Infinity Gauntlet, except it's on the wrong hand, because in the comics, the Infinity Gauntlet was on this hand. They changed that for the film. So now they've changed it forever. Hooray. But I like comic accurate Thanos a lot. I can't really nitpick with it. Because it's comic accurate Thanos. And in the comics his goal made sense. But in the movies it doesn't. Because he would have to snap every 20 years. Because that is how fast we all reproduce. <sighs> yes. Next up. I got my third favorite Spider-Man character. Who's actually a woman. I got... Spider-Gwen. I love Spider-Gwen. I know I'm nitpicking a lot of these, but that's just because of the things that have come out. This is a more simpler time of comic books. So here's Spider-Gwen. Spider-Gwen is awesome. And um, I actually gave away my Spider-Gwen pop figure to my friend a few days ago. But that's just because he loves it more than me. So I knew that she would be in a better place with him. 
But I love Spider Gwen. Spider Gwen's awesome, and uh, her backstory tragic but amazing, and just like everything she does is super cool. So yeah, I like Spider Gwen. Next up, I got my third favorite MCU character. I got comic Captain Marvel. Now, peop now um, I like the way her hair comes out of this. Like, I thought that was a cool touch, even for the film. Now, um, people would say this is fierce, but it's not. Um, in the comics, um, there was a dude named Captain Marvel who fought for the... Uh, for the Kree? Yeah, Kree. He fought for the Kree, and his powers transferred over to... Um, uh, I can't remember who the first lady's name was, but then uh, Carol Danvers, who became Captain Marvel, and yeah, she was pretty cool. In the movie, they changed it to a lady scientist, but that's still pretty cool. At least they got it mostly right. Like, not all the way right, but mostly right. Not totally right, but mostly right. <laughs> but, but yeah, um, oh, and if you're one of those fans out there that's smart like me, or if you're one of those people that's like, why is everyone complaining about Captain Marvel's hair? If you want a good fact, if someone ever complains about that, her hair has been short since the 2015 comics. So yeah, her hair's been short for a long time. Um, but because it was on the MCU screen film, I guess people decided that was the time to nitpick instead of before. So who fucking knows? But yeah, her hair's been short for a long ass fucking time. Like, very long. So, yeah. Five years. Next day is Punisher. I don't really have a lot to say about him. I don't want to go into it because then this... Mm, this freaking video would be very long. I should say I do not like Punisher. And I'm going to give that one away. I like the, uh, I like the Venomized version of Punisher and the Cosmic Ghost Rider Punisher. Those are the only two versions of Punisher I like because they have moral codes. Um, like the Venomized version of Punisher would not kill, uh, Spider-Man for Venom because he believes in Spider-Man and the cosmic version of Punisher worked for Thanos, which was super cool. So, I like those guys better than Punisher. So, yeah. So, here's, uh, Vision. Oh, Vision. I love Vision. Wish they fucking mentioned this in the film. They only measure the woods. <laughs> I found that hysterical. Vision. Vision. Okay, Vision. Got his own Endgame poster, even though they weren't going to bring him fucking back. Like, that's how hard they tease those fans with, you might get Vision and fuck you. So, so, yeah, Vision is always a cool character, and I like how in the comics, uh, there was a storyline where people were asking Vision, if the stone gets ripped out of your head, will you die? And Vision said, well... Well, Vision had a, a future version of himself there, and that future version answered for him and said, well, I can choose when I die. So, even if the stone gets ripped out of his head, he can choose when he wants to die. Because he said he can always repair himself. And I wish that knowledge transferred over to the MC freaking you. Next up, I got Guardians of the Galaxy Rocket. So yeah, this is what Guardians of the Galaxy Rocket looked like. Back then, he looks very, very cool. And believe it or not, Yondu was in the Guardians of the Galaxy at one point. So yeah. Next up, I have the monster known as Groot. Now, believe it or not, a long time ago, Groot wasn't even in the Guardians or connected to them. He was just a monster who looked like a giant tree thing known as Groot. And yeah, he was part of the uh, Monsters Unleashed storyline. And then they transfer him over to, um, can you stand? He stands, like us. They transfer him over to, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, which is very cool. Oh my god, fucking hell. Okay, this thing might hit the 20 minute mark, but I'll keep going for you guys. So, oh. Next up, I got Star-Lord. So that's what Star-Lord looked like back then. So you can really tell what they kept from that. They kept the Ravager sim single, and they kept the mask. And the rest of it, they threw away. Which is, is interesting to look at. So yeah. Then I got... I 
I got Comic Accurate Ultron, who I liked very much. I wish the James Spader Ultron looked like this guy, because this guy looks awesome. And then, oh my god. Okay, I got two more, so let's burn through these. I got Iron Fist, and his fist is all glowy, and Iron Fist is super cool, and I like Iron Fist. And then, I got Gamora. This is what Gamora looked like in the comics. She looks super badass. And she's got a sword, and she's got a cape, and so yeah, she looks super cool. Oops. And then finally, but not least, I have the character that's confused with Gamora the fucking most. I have... She-Hulk, who is Bruce Banner's cousin, but I can't remember her name, and I feel bad. But yeah, that's She-Hulk, and she's a lawyer, which is cool. So yeah, that is it for this video. If you liked it, please leave a like, and um, I'll see you guys later. Sorry this was a long one.